We're so glad you decided to join us online today. We're going to go ahead and do some worship. lives in me for I was dead in sin but I woke up to see the light no I won't boast but in the cross that saved my soul all you are here with us. My name is Erin. I'm part of the team here. And here at City Lights, our mission is to bring light to your life. And so we are bringing that right into your living room or on your phone or wherever you might be. And we're so excited that you chose to join us this morning. We've got some really fun updates that are, that are coming your way. So we actually just launched a brand new website. So we encourage you guys to check that out at wearecitylights.com. And the goal of that is that Obviously, we are all stuck in a little bit of a different situation now where most of us are home, most of us are working from home, and our church is going to be online for the next six to eight weeks. And so we are embracing that. We're leaning into that with intentionality. And so on the website, you'll find a bunch of different resources. Um, we're launching our small groups virtually this week. So we're so excited to be able to gather together in smaller groups and really bring community even in the places that we don't really feel connected right now, we're going to be connecting together because we think that this is the this is the chance. I know that I felt it at home. You know, this is really a time that's different than anything else that we've ever faced. And now is the best time to lean into that community where you can actually talk with people. You can follow a Bible reading plan. We'll have some fun groups um, like workout groups and a Netflix group. So check that out on the website and Jacob will talk about it a little bit more later. But we always start our services in person with some FaceTime, which is really just a chance to ask some questions to the people that are next to you. They might be your family, they might be your friends. And on our chat, you'll notice that there's a way that you can comment in there. So our question of the day is if we were not quarantined and nobody 
was sick, where would you be on vacation? If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? So you can actually post that into the chat right now and we can start seeing where everybody would love to be at. I know that for me, I would much rather prefer to be at the beach. Our family goes on vacation to Maine every year. Hopefully it's still happening in the summer, um, but that's where I would like to be. So we can all dream about the places that we'd like to be and then we're gonna continue with some worship. So I encourage you guys to lean in, to worship in your living room, to really engage that this isn't just watching a service, that this is celebrating what God is doing. Even in the midst of this, even in the midst of your living room, you can worship just like we were at church. So let's do that. Every day in your hands, you were there before time began. Sovereign one, I rest in your plan. From the depths to the dawn, you are there, your promise is strong. I will trust with all that I am. Jesus, Jesus, oh, how I need you. You stay the same. You are good in your ways. Jesus, Jesus, oh, how I need you, you are enough. All my trust is in you, Lord. You fashioned me for my heart, search my soul and know every thought. Love so great but never too far through the storm you're the calm every war you've already won life secure in your loving arms jesus jesus are good in your ways, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, oh, how I need you, you are enough. All my trust is in you, Ha! <laughs> 
to miracles, the impossible. I believe in you. I believe in you. You are powerful. God above it all. I believe in you. I believe in you. You do miracles, the impossible. good in your ways, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, oh, how I need you. You are enough. All my trust is in you. Amen. Amen. What a powerful song to sing at this time. God is above it all. And I want to encourage someone as we were singing. I, you know, I really felt the Holy Spirit where, where I was at, and, and I hope you did too. But I really felt like there's some people listening today that you really need to hear that, that God is above it all. God is above the circumstance, the situation, the pain that you're dealing with. He's, he's above it all, and he's for you, and he's with you. Let me pray real fast, and then, and then we'll go, go into the message. Let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for your goodness. We thank you for your favor. We thank you that you are God above it all. You do miracles. You do above and beyond. So Holy Spirit, come. Speak to people right where they are. Do what only you can do. God, we love you and we need you. In Jesus' name, everybody says, amen, amen, amen. Tap the person next to you and say, amen. Now tap the person to the other side of you, the second favorite, and tell them, hey, what's up, okay? All right, well, I am so glad you guys are here. My name is Jacob. I'm on the team here at City Lights. And wherever you're watching, like Aaron said, we're just happy you tuned in and you're listening to us. Um, we are finishing up a series today that we started two weeks ago that my wife kicked off. She, Aaron did a fantastic job talking about faith. And uh, so we, we're in a series called Faith, Hope, and Love. And we're going to finish that off. Before I get to that, I do have a couple city highlights that, that I want to mention. Um, as, Aaron, as Aaron mentioned earlier, so we are going to be online for the next six to eight weeks. Okay? So, we're, so we have readjusted everything that we do to be able to facilitate an online experience for people. Our mission at City Lights is simple. It's bringing light to your life so you can experience all that God has for you. So that mission isn't fulfilled just at the Regal Cinema in our, in our building. That mission is, is being filled, fulfilled every single day. Every single day we want to make that mission come a, a reality. And so, the, so what we have decided to do is not play on the defense of this, but we're going to be on the offense. We're, we're, we're going to continue to be a church that brings light to people's life. And so that's why we have redesigned our website. Um, special shout out to our friend John Hamilton, who did all of that for us. He was up late nights doing that. Thank you, John, um, for, for, for doing that shout out there. Okay. And then, um, and, and so we redesigned that. And with that, we are doing a few things to engage people. And the number one thing that I'm super pumped about is we are going to start online small groups. And so those small groups will be a workout group that's starting tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. Come on. Uh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to have another group called Pub Theology, where we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about things in the Bible and what does that mean while we're having a nice drink to go along with it. We're going to have a mom's break group. Come on, moms out there. You guys have been holding it down. And, uh, and we're going to have a, a Saturday morning prayer group. If you are interested in starting a group, for example, maybe you love to cook. And maybe you want to teach people how to cook. I would love for you to start a group. We can do it. Maybe you're someone in here that 
You know, you love, you have a certain th thing in the Bible that you want to read or a certain topic. I would love for you to host that group. Now, if you are interested in that, go ahead and shoot us a direct message right now or after the service. And so we can get you all the details of what it looks like to start a small group online. Okay. So the platform we will be using will be Google Hangouts and, uh, and we'll have all that information for you on our social media and we're going to shoot out an email. So, so if you are not getting emails from us, make sure you visit our website. And, and hit the tab on the bottom that says more info and you can sign in, get, get on our newsletters, okay? All right, so we're super pumped about that. The second thing we're pumped about is we're doing a Wednesday night pop-up service. And so every Wednesday at 7.30 and, uh, and, and later, we're gonna have a pop-up service that comes and just tries to stand with you and encourage you in the middle of the week. And, and we're, we're, we're pumped for that. And we're gonna start a church-wide Bible reading plan. So more info is going to come with that. And there's going to be a small group attached to that as well. So, so a lot of exciting things. And, and before, before I get into my message, the, the last kind of announcement I want to say is, is and this is for everyone watching, this, no matter where you're watching from, if you see a need, meet it. If you see a need, meet it, okay? It is in times like these that the church has to shine at its brightest. It's not when things are going great, when everything's all gravy and fine, when people are coming to your facility. It's when people are in need, when people are struggling, when there's fear going on, that's when the church needs to shine brightest. So some of the practical ways to do it is if you see a need, you meet it. You are the church. You meet that need. Don't wait for, for an announcement to come and we're going to go do this and that together. If you see a need, meet it and be the hands and feet of Jesus, okay? So awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes, we are gonna finish up this series, Faith, Hope, and Love, and I am so pumped about this message today. It is one of my favorite stories in the Bible, so let's go ahead and, and dive right into it, and we're gonna make this thing happen, okay? So our theme verse for this series is found in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. It says, and now these three remain, these three things will last. These three things will stand. These three things aren't going anywhere no matter what life throws at you. These three things are something that you can hang your life on. And these three things remain are faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. Now, what is love? What is love? What does this exactly mean? I remember a few years ago when I was a pastor in Virginia Beach, I was at my barber shop and I was trying to invite my barber and some of the guys there to hear me preach on a Sunday service. And they asked me, they said, well, what are you talking about? Why should we come out? And I said, oh, you're going to love it, guys. I am talking about the power of love. And then every single dude at the barber shop was like, Nah, man, I'm good. I don't need to hear about love. What you talking about? I don't want to hear about all that love stuff. Um, and I was like confused at first. I was like, what? Who doesn't want to hear about love? I love love. Love is good, right? I love love. And, but they didn't, they didn't want to hear about it. And then when I started to think about it, it's because most of the time when we think about love or when people think about love, they think about feelings. You got these feelings of love. They think about romance. They think about being emotional. You know, that's kind of the thoughts that people think when they think about love. But what if I told you that love is not a feeling? That love is not an emotion? Love is not just something that you, that you do on February 14th. That's Valentine's Day. Okay. Um, but that love is fierce. That love is strong. Love is powerful. Love is alive and love is active and with everything going on in the world today i think you would agree with me love is what we need is love is what we need check this out first john 4 18 says this there is no fear in love come on man there's a lot of fear going around there's a lot of anxiety going on. There's a lot of uncertainty happening in our world. But the Bible tells us, this is, this is what the Word of God tells us, there is no fear in love. But why? Why is that? Because perfect love drives out fear. See, the good news is no matter what uncertainties that we're dealing with, no matter what anxieties that we have going on in our lives, 
when we are connected to Jesus, when we are connected to him, he has a love for us that drives out fear. We have hope in him. We have faith in him. And his love will drive out fear, which leads me to my starting point today. My starting point today is this. There is real fear in my life right now. There is real fear in my life right now. And maybe because of current events, maybe you've lost your job. And there's fear in that. Maybe because of what's going on, you feel alone. You're kind of isolated at your house. That's, that's one of the reasons why we're starting our online groups. Because we, we don't believe that people should be isolated during this time. Maybe there's fear because you're thinking about the economy and, and even how things are going to come back into place. Maybe there's fear in your life because you've been dealing with your kids every single day and you watch Frozen 2 about 500 times already right now. Come on, someone. We about to go into the unknown right now. Um, or maybe, maybe you're dealing with the same fears and anxieties that you've been dealing with before all this has happened and now they have even heightened up. But you will say there is real fear in my life right now. But my destination point today is this. But I have courageous love that drives out fear. But I have courageous love. There is fear in my life, but I have courageous love that will drive out that fear. So, so I got to say something. I've been married now for five years. Come on. It's been awesome. And I've been married to the most beautiful woman in the whole world. She's amazing. And in that process though, in that process of being married, I have learned a lot about courageous love. I've learned a lot about how courageous love drives out fear, especially during our first year of marriage. When Aaron and I first got married, that was a big adjustment for me because I grew up, I have two older brothers. So I'm the youngest, I'm the baby. I got two older, I got two older brothers. Then when I moved out, I moved into a three bedroom townhouse with six guys and a dog. So that was a lot, you know, that was a lot of stuff going on. So needless to say, when I got married to Aaron and we moved into our first condo together, living with the girl was a lot different, right? It was a lot different than what I was than what I was used to. So instead of seeing facial hair in the bathroom sink, I saw hair straighteners and curlers and all these electronic devices that are plugged in to the to the outlet and, and there's water and there's electronics and I feel like it's gonna blow up. So that was kind of scary, you know, but but it was an adjustment, needless. To say, but the thing I learned the, the fastest, the thing I learned the quickest how to be courageous in my love was when it came to dealing with spiders. When it came to dealing with bugs. Now, my wife, Erin, she is 100% completely, absolutely afraid of spiders, bugs, roly polies dirt, whatever looks like a spider, she's afraid of it, okay? Now, here's the problem, though. Her husband is 100% absolutely, completely afraid of spiders, bugs, roly-polies, dirt, anything that looks like a bug. So, so this was a problem. This was a conflict when we first got married because sometimes, a lot of times, I'll be watching TV, watching Food Network, watching people beat Bobby Flay and I just want to let Bobby Flay know, come challenge me because I'll beat you Bobby Flay because I'm a pretty good cook. Um, but, but we'll be watching TV and then all of a sudden I'll hear Aaron scream. Ah, that's the way I, that's the way ah, I picture Aaron screaming. She'll scream, ah, you know, and then I'll have to get up and I, and in my head, I know she's screaming because she sees a spider and she wants me to kill this spider. So because we were newly married though, I had to pretend that I wasn't afraid of this spider. So on the outside, I looked all hard, like, yeah, man, I'm gonna get this spider. Yeah, where's Charlotte's web at? I'm gonna get it, you know? But on the inside, I was like, oh no, this is scary. I hope it doesn't bite me. See, I'm the kind of person, when I think about spiders, I think about spiders crawling in my ear at night while I'm sleeping and planting eggs. Like, I, like they freak me out, man. So anyways, Anyways, but when we were first married, I couldn't I couldn't show that how to be hard. So I would go in, get the spider, I'll grab a whole can of Lysol and spray that thing. You can't do that anymore. You spray a whole thing of Lysol now, that's like against the law. I'll spray that thing, man, you know, I'll get that thing going. Then I'll kill that bug 
you know, and I, 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 it would be all right. Okay, so I had to do this for the first couple months. I had to be hard, pretend like I was good. There was this one particular time though that um, that there was a spider and Aaron screamed, eh. and but then she said I killed it. I was like, oh snap, she killed the spider. So so I was like, this is good. I don't have to do it. Then all of a sudden I hear Aaron scream again. Meh. She says it's back, it's back. The spider's back. I was like, oh shoot. So I hurry up and got up, and this spider is crawling in the shower. So I grab a whole thing of tissue and I wrap my whole hand with that thing. Again, you can't do these things anymore. I wrap my whole hand with this tissue and I smush that thing, man. I smush it and I throw it in, in the toilet. Now this next part, I can't make this up. I flush the toilet and then all of a sudden, this spider is army crawling his way out of the toilet. I was like, oh snap, it's back from the dead. I was like, this is the Jesus of spiders right now. Man, this thing is resurrected. So I grabbed some more toilet paper and some more Lysol, two things that you can't do that to nowadays. And I smushed this thing more and I sprayed this thing more and I flushed it down the toilet again. And I don't think it came, came back. But I had to learn how to have courageous love because no matter how afraid I was of those spiders, I love my wife more than I was afraid. Now, the craziest part about this, this doesn't change as, as time goes on. Now that I have a daughter, I got to protect her too. The other day, we were in the house and a wasp flew into the house. And I was like, oh, shoot. And then Kingsley saw it and she was like, mm. she was, didn't know what it was. And so I said, oh, no, this wasp is out to get my baby. I got to protect her. And so I get up and I grab one of Kingsley's toys and I slap this thing with it. Then Kingsley cried after that. So that wasn't probably the best thing I did. I probably shouldn't have beat a wasp with Kingsley's toys. But anyways, I couldn't let fear stop me from having courageous love. I had, I had to take action. And I want you to know today, you got some fear in your life. There's uncertainties in your life. There's things that make you afraid. But courageous love will look at fear and say, even though I'm afraid, I'm not going to stop now. I'm not going to give up now because my God is bigger than my fear. Okay? So check this out. There's a story in the Bible, one of my favorite stories in the Bible that I'm going to read to you today. And I think this gives us three ways how we can activate courageous love to drive out fear in our lives, okay? And that, like I said, and during this time of life, we need to know how to have courageous love and we have to show courageous love to the people watching us. So check this out. Point number one is this. Courageous love gives you godly confidence. Courageous love gives you godly confidence. See, in 2 Kings in the Bible, it tells a story about a prophet, Elisha. Now, Elisha, who is a man of God, who performed many miracles, would come to this town very often. He would come to this town, and there was a Shenamite woman there and her husband. Now, the Bible refers to the Shenamite woman as a well-to-do woman, which means she's a good woman. She's take care, she takes care of people. She has a good heart. She's a good woman. So every time Elisha would pass by the town, the Shenamite woman would make him a meal, set up a place for Elisha to stay overnight if he needed to, Eventually, Elisha came through the town so much that the Shenamite woman made a, made a room for Elisha in, in their house. This is how much she took care of, 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 of him. Now, check this part out in 2 Kings um, chapter 4, starting in verse 11. It says this. It says, One day when Elisha came, he went up to his room and lay down. He said to his servant Gehazi, Call the Shenamite. So he called her, and she stood before him. Elisha said to him, Tell her, you have gone to all this trouble for us. Now what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my own people. What can be done for her? Elisha asked Gehazi. Elijah asked. Gehazi said, she has no son and her husband is old. Now, for this to make sense, in that day, it was very dishonorable for a woman to not give her husband a son because the son would, would be the heir to the family. So it was a great disappointment because it meant without a son that the family's name would die, that the legacy would end, that the, that the land and possessions that the husband had would just go to either another family member or someone else in the, in the area. So the woman's husband was old so if he were to die, the woman 
would then become a widow. She would have no one to take care of her without having a son. She would not have a provider. There is fear in this situation. Check this out. Then Elisha said, call her. So he called her and she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elisha said, you will hold a son in your arms. No, my Lord, she objected. Please, man of God, don't mislead your servant. Now, now, clearly from her reaction, this woman has been through it. She's been through it. She's been through some pain. She's been through disappointments. She's had discouragement. You can, the Bible doesn't tell us, but you can assume maybe she has some miscarriages. Maybe her expectations were so high at one point just to have them let down. Her response to Elisha shows that she did have a desire for her son, but it also shows how her confidence is gone because of life disappointments. How her confidence is not there because things did not go how she hoped. See, and you may be struggling right now with disappointments. You may be struggling right now with discouragement. Maybe, like I said, you lost your job. Or maybe you're watching and you're, you're a boss, you're a manager, and you had to lay off people and that hurt you. That, that was hard for you to do. Maybe you're stuck at home all day. Maybe you're feeling like there's disappointments in your life. But I want to encourage you, don't let your disappointments steal your godly confidence. Don't let your disappointments steal your godly confidence. And notice I'm saying godly confidence. And godly confidence is different from self-confidence. So it's good to have self-confidence. It's good to have a good self-image about yourself. But here's my only thing with self-confidence. Like, like I know myself a lot. And if I have confidence in myself, I mess up too much to have confidence in myself. But godly confidence is saying that I have confidence in a God who has not failed and he won't start with me. I have confidence in a God that will win. A confidence in God that has victory in his hands. Confidence in a God who's a loving father that embraces me in times of need. My confidence is in God, but life disappointments will try to make you focus not on God, not on what he can do for you, but on the pain, on the fear that you feel right now. See this picture. I want you to see this. Here is the man of God, Elisha, telling this woman, God is going to come through for you. Just trust me. Have hope. Have faith. God is going to come through for you. He's going to give you a son. But her life disappointments speak louder than the word of God in her life. Because she's had so much disappointments, she can't even hear what God is saying to her. But then check out what the Bible says next. Then it says this, but the woman became pregnant. She became pregnant. And the next year, about that same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elisha had told her. See, point one today is this, courageous love gives you godly confidence. My second point today is this, courageous love doesn't let one thing at all take away from the promises of God on your life. And I know that was a lot to say, so I'm going to say it again. Courageous love doesn't let one thing at all take away from the promises of God on your life. Courageous love does not give up. Courageous love does not count themselves out. Courageous love drives out fear. It drives out that anxiety. See, she has a son. God came through. And then some time has passed. You can assume four to five years. And now the Shenanite woman's son is older. Life is going the way she wanted. Life is, is she's feeling the dream that she had. And have you ever, have you ever been in a point of life where you felt like, finally, things are going the way I want. Finally, things are good. Finally, things are moving in a direction that I was hoping. But, but then that big old butt always comes along, doesn't it? That trying to distract you. That big butt comes along. Check this out. 2 Kings 4, starting verse 18. It says, the child grew. And one day he went out to his father who was with the reapers 
and that's just a boy band, the Reapers. Yep. Um, he said to his father, my head, my head. And his father told a servant, carry him to his mother. What a dad thing to do right there. Um, and after, after the servant had lifted him up and carried him to his mother, the boy sat on her lap until noon. And then, and then he, then he died. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. The boy went out to his father. My head, my head. The servant lifted him, carried him to his mother. The boy sat on the Shenamite woman's lap until noontime. And then, then he died. She said, don't mislead me. Don't play with my emotions. She said, I'm good. I, I know I'm not gonna have a son. I know I, I I dealt with that. I dealt with that pain. I dealt with that disappointment. I dealt with that dis, dis, dis encouragement. But then but then God comes through. Then God gives her a promise. God gives her the son. Then she has the promise. The promise begins to grow. The promise begins to give her life. The promise is growing, and then all of a sudden the promise dies. What happens when life disappointments come? When we're planning and hoping for things and we see God's faithfulness and then all of a sudden we don't know where God's faithfulness went. What happens when the promises of God feel like they, feel like they're, they die? Sometimes it's hard to be courageous when you felt like your promises are gone. It's hard to believe God love, God's love drives out fear. When I feel so overwhelmed with my fear. But I want you to check something out. I want you to check out the response of this well-to-do woman. I want you to check out her response. Check this out. It says, and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door behind him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. Then he said, why will you go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, all is well. All is, all ain't well. All ain't well for her right now, but her response to the situation is all is well. Then she saddled, on, saddled the donkey and said to her servant, urge the animal on. Do not slacken the, the, the pace for me unless I tell you all is well. See, here's the thing. Jesus tells us this. Jesus says in this life, in this life that you're living right now, you will have troubles. You will have heartache. Don't believe some false prosperity gospel that when you give your life to Jesus, everything is going to be all unicorns and pretty, pretty pony stuff. Living a life for Jesus does not excuse you from pain. There is pain. There is trouble. There is heartache. Jesus says in this life, you will have trouble. But then he says, but take heart. Take heart, have courage, because my perfect love has overcome the world. So you may be dealing with some issues that you can't believe. You may be struggling with some fears. You may be dealing with some things that you don't want to be dealing with. But take heart, Jesus says, well, I have overcome the world. Here's a Shunammite woman. She walks up to her husband, says, I need a servant, I need a donkey, and I got to go and visit the man of God. I want you to know today, you don't have to go somewhere to visit God, right where you are right now, because of the love of Jesus on that cross, because he died for your sins, but three days later rose again. He bridged the gap from you to God, and you can access God right now in your fear, right now in your trouble, right now in your anxiety. And I'm preaching because... I feel this fear. I understand this discouragement. I understand this disappointment. But the more I understand all these things, the more I understand that my God is bigger, that my God's love is greater than these current circumstances. See, this well-to-do woman, she said, I'm going to fight for my promise. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to fight for my promise. And I want you to see something. She had a decision to make. When her promise was dead in her lap, she either could give up 
or she could get up. She's either going to give up or she's going to get up. See, see, don't give up on your kids, but get up and keep loving them. Don't give up on your marriage, but get up and keep working on it. Don't give up on school. Get up and keep going after it. Don't give up on beating that addiction. Get up and fight even harder. You have a decision to make right now, friends. You're either going to give up or you're going to get up. And this woman, she got up. She got up. And where the enemy would tell you, you got to give up. You can't, you can't keep moving on. You got to stay where you are. Friends, hear me today. You have to get up. You got to get up. Jesus got up from the grave. Jesus got up. And since he got up, we can get up. The sheet of my woman. She goes up to Elisha and she says, did I tell you that I didn't want a son, but you gave me a son anyways? You're going to resurrect this promise right now. You're going to go and make this thing right. See, point one today is this courageous love gives you godly confidence. Point two, courageous love doesn't let one thing at all take away from the promises of God on your life. And my third and my final point today is this courageous love pursues God's faithfulness. Courageous love pursues God's faithfulness. Now I want you to check out this, this last part. And, but, but, but check this out. There's this verse in the Bible that Jesus actually says when it comes to prayer, when it comes to approaching God, when it comes to pursuing God, there's three things you need to do. You need to ask, you need to seek, and you need to knock. And now being a dad, my daughter, she loves snacks. She loves applesauce. And here's the thing. This is what she will do. First, she will ask. She will say, applesauce, applesauce. She does this all the time, even after she eats. Applesauce. And I say, no, Kingsley. You just ate. You can't have applesauce right now. And what does she do after she asks for the, the applesauce? And I tell her, no. Well, she gets up and she goes to the pantry. And so she goes seeking for this applesauce. She'll get up. She'll walk to the pantry. I'll follow her into the pantry. And she'll just be standing there looking for the applesauce. And I said, Kingsley, I said, no, no applesauce. No applesauce. You just ate. And she'll just say, applesauce, applesauce. And then after I say, nope, you, got, you, got, you can't go in the pantry. You got to leave. What does she do next? She starts just knocking things. She starts looking through, through the goldfish bag. She starts doing whatever she can to find this applesauce. Hey, I'm going to let you know this. If my almost two-year-old daughter can ask, seek, knock about some applesauce, you can approach God and say, God, I'm going to ask you for this. I'm going to seek you with everything I have, and I'm going to knock until you answer. See, I want you to know today, don't give up, but get up and approach God and pursue, pursue the faithfulness of God. So the woman, she grabs Elisha. She said, you're going to come back to my house. You're going to resurrect my promise because you told me something and you made this happen. And God, I'm going to hold you accountable to the promise that you made me. And check this out. It says this. When Elisha reached the house, there was a boy lying dead on the couch. He went in, shut the door on the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he got on the bed. And he laid on the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands, and he stretched himself out on the boy. And I want you to see that this is a prophetic picture of what Jesus would do for all of us. That Jesus would look at our dead promises, look at us being dead to sin, look at us in our brokenness, and he would stretch out his arms. And though he was sinless and perfect, he said, I'll stretch out my arms and I will die for you. The verse continues and it says, and the boy's body grew warm. Elisha turned away, walked back and forth in the room, and then he got on the bed and stretched out one more time. And the boy sneezed seven times. And I, I could preach a whole message on that one weird verse right there. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha summoned his servant and said, call the Shenamite. And he did. When she came in, he said, take your son. She came in, fell at his feet, bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. 
her promise came back to life. Courageous love drives out that fear. See, don't count out the faithfulness of God. I want you to see this courageous love was displayed by Jesus. Jesus, before his crucifixion, he's in the garden and he prays, Lord, if you can, take this cup away from me. See, Jesus didn't want to go through the pain of crucifixion. Jesus, like us, had this feeling of being afraid. And he wished there could have been another way. But Jesus had love for us. And his love for us was bigger than any fear. Where does your courage come from? In times of need, where does your courage come from? Your courage could come from looking towards Jesus, who with courageous love died for you. And with courageous love rose again. See, friends, we can have courage because Jesus is our courage. Jesus is our hope. There's real fear, yeah. But there's real love. And that perfect love drives out all fear. Bow your heads with me wherever you are and let's pray. God, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Meet people right where they are. Yeah, where, the, where there is overwhelming amount of fear, Jesus, bring peace. Bring courage. Where people want to give up, remind people that they can get up. Um, I even feel right now, there's some people in here that, yeah, you lost your job. There's unknowns about, the, about your job. And I feel like the Lord is saying right now, lean into him. He's with you in this storm. He's with you. I even feel like there's some business owners. Yep, you feel like, is this it? Is this over? And the Lord is saying right now, it is not done. It's not done. Your promise, your promise will come back. If you're listening to us right now, and maybe, maybe you never made a decision to trust Jesus with your life. Maybe you, you just stumbled upon this on Facebook, or you jumped into someone's watch party, and you're like, I have this fear. I, I, I don't have that courage like that Sheena might woman, but I need it. If you want to make a decision to trust Jesus with your life for the first time, I want you to pray this prayer with me right where you are. Or maybe you have followed Jesus, but life got in the way. Fear has gotten in the way. and You want to make a decision to trust Jesus again right where you are. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Just say, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Make me new. Today I trust in you. Today I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Clap wherever you are for people that have made that decision. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to send us a direct message on, on Facebook right now to our City Lights account, and we'll love to connect with you about that. That is the best decision that you can make with your life. And I want to give you hope. There, there may be fear, but God's love for you is way bigger, and it will drive out that fear. Okay, now... Now, before I close, there's a couple things I do I do want to say. Hey, if you want to partner with us financially, we would love that. There's ways for you to give to City Lights. And I want you to know, because of your giving, even through this difficult time, we've been able to send people out to help with Richmond Public Schools. We've been able to feed some families and support local businesses because of your giving. So we want to encourage, we want to continue to be a light to our city. And one of the best ways to do that is by you uh, partnering with us financially. So you should see right on your Facebook comment right now, ways to give. You can visit our website and you can do that all electronically, okay? Now, um, our online small groups, they are launching this week. So they're starting this Monday. So make sure you, you do that. Now, our church-wide Bible plan, we are going to post a 
um, update today on our Facebook and on our Instagram accounts when that um, Bible reading plan is going to be active. Now, if you're going to be stuck at home all day, there's a couple things I want you to do. I want you to dive into God's Word. Take this opportunity to dive into God's Word and also take this opportunity here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw it out here on Facebook to keep, so, so all you guys can keep me accountable. This is my time and it is your time to get that hashtag HSB. Come on, man. We need that hot summer body. What else we doing? Come on. So, so let's do it. So, so Monday at 7.30, we're going to do our first uh, workout group. And then, and then with that group, we're also going to give you some ways for you to stay healthy during this time. I don't know about you guys, but I've eaten all my quarantine snacks already. I got to make a change. It ain't going to work. Okay. So, so, um, so we're excited for our online community. It's going to be awesome. Okay. Well, hey, I love you guys. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to Aaron and myself or anyone on our City Lights team. We're, we're here for you. We're cheering you on. We're in your corner. We will see you Wednesday at our pop-up service.